Woo! What's going on, guys? It's Brandon L. Draper with the Start Thinking Forward Morning Show. Hey, guys, if you haven't heard about a free way to share your story or voice with a community of like-minded people, well, I got something for you. The No Excuse Way to Start Your Podcast. Let me explain. First and foremost, it is free 99. They got all types of creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. No special equipment needed, right? You can also make money from your podcast. There's not a minimum amount of people need to listen to it. It's everything plus more that you'll need to create your very own podcast in one place. So, what are you waiting on? Download your free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey guys, real quick. So before we start this podcast this morning, a um, little different. So I'm going to kind of take you down memory lane a little bit um, about a very close friend of mine because today's show is about 100% about regret. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but sometimes those regrets and things that we have in our lives, oh my God, it can really, you know, stop us from from moving our lives forward with with anything the simplest thing the simplest task that prevents us from doing it and i met a brother that was going through a very difficult situation in his life and 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 just to kind of give you an idea he's no longer with us but i want to share this experience that i had um with him and some of the regrets because i didn't get the interview i didn't get to interview him so anyway long story short um i talk a little bit about the feelings that i had behind that and now you know don't wait for something to happen just go ahead and create it if you got the idea in your mind go ahead and do it i had countless opportunities you're gonna hear the story but i had countless opportunities to do something um to be able to share that experience with you but somehow i failed um because i didn't recognize that at the moment i didn't have what i needed in me at that time to recognize what i had in front of me but anyway i'm going to share the story with you so please tune in and listen all right let's get it good morning wake up wake up wake up and welcome to the start thinking forward morning show my name is Brandon L. Draper. I'm the host of this explosive podcast. And this morning we have an interesting show. Um, so this is definitely something um, from my heart. Um, and basically the title of this is you will regret 100% of the things you don't do. Right. Um, this is near and dear to my heart. Um, oftentimes... Uh, at night, late at night, early morning is when I get inspiration. And this morning I was thinking about all the possibilities and, and things that I got lined up that I'm working towards. I know where I'm at. I know what my goal is. We talked about it yesterday and I know I'm moving in that direction. But this funny thing came over me and I was thinking about a friend um, that I lost you know, and man, a couple of years ago, and I, and I think back to it, um, my brother, good games, Kenneth, good games. Um, and I met him, uh, I, I went to a vegetarian place where they sell kale wraps and stuff. And, um, I love these kale wraps and, um, I have a very electrifying personality and certain people, you know, it just their personality, who they are is going to, you know, I'm going to be attracted to that person. They're going to be attracted to me. Like we're just two lights in a room. And I saw this brother, he was talking. Um, and me, I'm the type of person when I'm out in public, I'll spark up a conversation with the most randomest person you can imagine. And that's just my personality. I, I can relate to just about anyone um, that I come in contact with. And, and he had the same personality. So immediately um, a friendship, a bond um, w- was made. And sometimes we don't really know what we got in, until we lose it. Um, one of the most inspiring um, people you will ever run into, Kenneth Good Games. 
And this brother really inspired me. Um, very quickly in, in in our friendship, I discovered um, that my brother um, had cancer and he was fighting it. And just on outward appearance, you would not have known the pain um, that he was going through. You would not have known anything. Um, this brother had no regret. Everything that he, he wanted to do, uh, he put his mind to and he tried his very best to execute it. And I think you know, towards the, the evening parts of our lives, we become something different. Um, and maybe it's because we sense an incoming or whatever the case may be. Um, he was the, his best version um, of himself. And I had wanted to, to do an interview with him on my show. And I also... Um, wanted to help him with his art because he was an artist and uh, he had some very unique art um, and man it, it was just it was just phenomenal um, the work that he did um, things that I, I know I've never seen before um, and I consider myself to, to be um, an art lover and some of the things that he, he was drawing was way beyond his time so long story short, we developed this relationship and I'm supposed to have this interview with him. And um, I wanted to talk about where he was at in his life, um, where did he come from, you know, who he was, um, because I th- I thought, you know, I, it's not that I even thought is that I knew that people needed to hear this insight um, from this brother that was different from my perspective, uh, the way I looked at things. And, you know, I remember we, we set up a time for us to, to do this interview and I reached out to him and I didn't get an answer. And immediately, you know, I'm like, man, this this dude stood me up and he was so strong and resilient. He didn't really want to tell me, um, that he just wasn't feeling well and that he was actually progressively getting worse. And I didn't know this at the time. He never, he never told me because every time I talked to him, I mean, it was so much passion and, 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 and life in his voice. You, you could never imagine what this brother actually was going through. And later on, you know, talking to his parents, I realized that oftentimes he'd be talking to me and he would mute the phone um, to deal with whatever he was dealing with and then get back on the phone and, and reset, you know, to still be able to engage in that conversation with me. And I, I didn't know this, you know, that, that that he was just that strong of a person. And um, anybody that knows me on a personal level know that your boy loves to talk. I love to talk about every subject imaginable. You want to talk about religion, politics, business, technology, um, economics, whatever. I I love to, to to talk about that. I can talk about anything for just about hours. Interesting subjects and interesting people. Um, I have a love and, and a passion for. It. Um, so I'm waiting, waiting. He doesn't answer, and immediately that human thing. You know, we, we don't really think. You know, we 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 we're quick to get upset, not even knowing the circumstances, and. Um, That day um, that we were supposed to um, have that interview was the day that he passed away. And I never was able to have that interview. We will, I will, we will regret 100% of the things that we don't do. There were many opportunities and times that I had access to him to do this. He came to my home, sat down, and and little did I know that that would be the last time that I would be able to talk to my friend um, face-to-face. That would be the last setting. And I didn't document it um, because... In my mind, I was fixated on the idea that 
he he was going to recover. I mean, I never knew anyone as strong as as as, as he was with what he was facing uh, against. Um, knowing and walking in it and accepting, but accepting the belief that you know that his faith. What he believed in what was going to take him is what was going to give him the salvation either way. And being on the outside of that, that very much intrigued me. Right. Very much intrigued me. I've never seen a human being act in that capacity. And when I looked at him, the most scariest part of it was putting myself in his shoes and saying, could I be that strong? Would I be that strong? And then ans- asking yourself that question and not truly knowing the answer. I'd never seen anything like that before. And I wish that I could share that with you. But I can't because he's gone. You know, uh, He left us June 27, 2018. Three year battle with cancer. And I look back at that moment. One that I let him down. I let humanity down. That I was so blessed with a gift to touched the hearts and minds of so many people and I failed to act upon getting his experience and letting you experience it so now the only thing that I can do is speak from a storyteller's point of view instead of being able to introduce you to him his experience even though he is no longer here and that's that's why I do what I do There's one day that I'm not going to be here. There's one day that all of us are not going to be here. What are we leaving behind? And that is something that's near and dear to my heart. So when you're talking about having regret, we start regretting the things that we didn't do, that we should have done. Or even perhaps the things we shouldn't have done. Time wasted. Experience wasted. Resource wasted. Time wasted. But one thing we know for a fact. You are always going to regret 100% of the things that you don't do. Things that you wanted to do. But you were scared to do. Things that you were too lazy to do. Things that you didn't recognize that you needed to do. See, there's no unlimited time to get it right. We don't know what that time, we don't know what that moment may come that we must prepare ourselves in order for something to manifest, in order for something to happen. I regret not having that interview. I regret not videotaping our last experience. I regret that 100%. Because there were so many opportunities for me to get that in. And to me, who this brother is and what he is about needs to be talked about. I've never seen a human being in this way. And like I said earlier, to ask yourself the question and don't know the answer, could you be that strong? Could you be that resilient in the midst of that type of adversity? See, we're all facing problems. Yes, indeed. We know that. But we all have different levels of problems. And and some of the problems we have, if if you were to hear the problems of others, you would say, man, I really don't have any problems. Oh, man, I I can work with this, but I would definitely not want to work with that. It's not a measuring contest to to, to measure who has the worst problems. It's about understanding that we're all experiencing life and our own different view, our own different scope. And in that view, in our perspective, we're able to handle things differently based upon 
things we've experienced. The things that we are experiencing then becomes us, who we are. So through you knowing who you are and what you are in this world, not just knowing what you are to others, you're able to be stronger spiritually and connect to something that brings you closer to you, the authentic you, not the you that's been sculpted by your environment, the you that's been sculpted by society, the you that you have sculpted. The 100% authenticity of you. This brother found that. Kenneth Good Games, Ken, he found that. And that was something to look at. That was something to experience. Because there's so many people out there going through pain, going through struggles. And somehow they just give up. Ken never gave up. I started all the way to the end. He never gave up. He always was fighting. He was literally fighting for his last breath. And through his last breath, through the last words, he still wanted to give to give a word of encouragement give a word of hope give a word of inspiration how many of us can honestly say that if we were facing that type of situation that we would still maintain that level I ask myself that very same question now some years later and The answer is, I would have to. That's my way of giving back. Being the best you, being the best version of you. Showing that you can go through the most hardest situations and and still keep a positive point of view. To understand that what's happening to you is nothing new. It's called life. You're not the first one to experience whatever it is that you're experiencing. I don't care how hard or difficult it is. It's nothing new. Someone has experienced the same, if not worse, thing than you have. And somehow they were able to overcome that. Let's not waste our opportunity of life by making the wrong decisions. In some cases, where we jeopardize our freedoms. Let's not jeopardize our life by just living impulsively and doing things that can hurt us physically. You know, let's be mindful of what is our long game in this thing. What do we truly want to give back? Because if you're, you know, either you're either going to get busy living or you're going to get busy dying. Are you telling the world right now that you want to be here the next 20, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years? Are you telling the world that? Because it's easy for us to utter these things out of our mouths, but it's another to actually do. We can say that we want to be here for the 30 next 30 years, but we eat whatever we want to eat. Right. We don't keep up with our health. So when we truly know ourselves and we can look at ourselves and be honest with ourselves and says, you know what? I'm saying one thing, but my actions look at me. I'm not telling the world I'm going to be here in 30 years. I'm telling the world that I'm not. Right. So I'm not taking I'm too busy and and I'm getting ready to launch a book. Talking about that busy factor, that, that busyness that we have. Right. We're so busy doing everything else that we don't have the time to take care of ourselves. And then when ourselves start to fail us, now the only thing that we can be concerned about is is our health or or whatever situation we only can be concerned with that. Because at that point, it's either me or them. And I'm trying to fight for me right now in order to be there for them. But it used to be just about them that have neglected me. And now me is going to be gone. Now that that self-actualization comes in and you start realizing the bigger picture of things. 
My challenge to you is let's not wait till we get to the evening part of our life or be facing a perilous situation until that shift is made. Let's make that shift now so that we don't have regrets of things that we should have done, but we didn't do. The best time to have done what it is, is when you were thinking about it then 20 years ago. But don't worry about that. The second best time is to do it now because now you know you don't want to live with that. You don't want all those all those dreams, aspirations, talents, and abilities just to go away with you. They were designed for you. No one else can do it. No one else is going to do it. No one could have done what Dr. King did the way Dr. King did it. Period. No one could have done it that way. There could have been some people just like them. They could have gotten some results. There were people before Dr. King. There were people after Dr. King. But we there's a reason why we have a holiday celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King. There's a reason, right? Because he was something different. There's something different in you. There's something different in me. But we have to bring it out within us. And what's different about us, that uniqueness, is what the world will fall in love with. Because you're not like anyone else on this face of this earth that will ever come or ever be other than you at this moment. So that makes you very special. And to know that you have something within you that no other human being has ever had. That should get you excited. That should get you out of your bed right now. And that definitely should get you thinking about the greater scope of life in your existence. You will regret 100% of the things that you don't even try. You will regret all the things that you wanted to do but failed to do because you were scared or you believe you weren't worthy. Maybe that's your thing. No one said it was going to be easy. That's the one thing they told us the truth about. They told you it was going to be difficult. Whether or not you believe that, that's on you. When they told me it was going to be difficult, I believed them. So I know that when I face adversities, I tell people all the time, get excited. Because when you start facing adversity, that's the reason why most people won't do it. What you're going through right now is why people don't do it. So you know that you're in the process and the process is going to move forward. You just decide if you're going to be with it or without it. I decided I was going to go with it. It was very painful. It's going to be painful because it's a transition. It's a change. And we as human beings, we don't welcome change very easily. We also don't process regret very easily as well. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this show this morning. I hope it inspired you. Please share this show with someone that may need some hope and inspiration to carry on one morning at a time. Hey, follow us on Instagram at The Real Motivational King. And if you have a story, a compelling story that you want to share, you want to be able to transform the world, or maybe you just want to transform yourself, share it with us. Publish with Pinnacle Point Publishing. Visit us online at www.pinnaclepointpublishing.com. Everyone has a mission. Go out, set your sails, and go for what you know. Hey guys, I love you. And until next time, I will talk to you later. And if you're trying to stay fly and be a king or a queen in your own right, visit our closing line, zenofcourse.com. That's Z-E-N-I-T-H-C-O-R-E-S dot com. Hey, guys, until tomorrow morning, I'll talk to you later.